Hey, everybody. This is Jimmy Bell from Autograph and House of Lords, and you are watching CMS TV. Are you ready to scream? It is Chris Aiken Presents, and I, of course, am Chris Aiken, and I am super happy to be talking to this guy. Uh, I loved him in Metal Church. So did you. Don't lie. You did. And um, you love him in Between Worlds. Uh, gonna love him in Vicious Rumors, I'm thinking. So, um, But for now, he has yet another project, and I think this one is way more special to him, way more important to him, and we will talk all about it. It is called Monroe's Thunder. It's out today. It is called The Black Watch, and here to talk all about it is the vocalist himself and the main man, Mr. Ronnie Monroe. Ronnie, how are you, man? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Well, dude, let's dig right into this thing, man. I I, I just got this. Obviously, you know this. I just got this a couple of days ago from you, and I've already spun it like 10, 11 times, man, for, for a couple of reasons. Not, not just because I was doing this, because if I was just doing this, I'd have spun it once. But uh, it, it's it's catchy, and it's a little different from anything else that you've ever done, and and yet it's it's very metal. It's definitely not so. You know, I think when you start telling when when I start telling people, well, this is different than they've ever done. People start thinking, you know, acoustic solo or you know, <laughs> and this yep. ain't that. This is definitely very heavy. And it seems like it has all elements of the Ronnie Monroe professional career in it. A lot of metal, a little bit of prog, storytelling, you know, it has everything in there. So why don't we start there, man? Tell me all about this this project, The Black Watch. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you pay attention, as always. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, sure. The Black Watch, uh, Monroe's Thunder idea came up quite a few years ago, actually, uh, okay. with the late wife. Um, she was my manager and mm -hmm. I was kind of searching for what, what my next thing was going to be. And I always wanted to do a concept thing, uh, I, you know, kind of about my family heritage, which is rich in the Scottish Braveheart stuff. Sure. You know, and I was figuring, okay, well, let's do that. So she was like, yeah, let's do it. So that's how it started. And then she, uh, she was friends with, uh, David Mark Pierce. Um, so we brought him in, uh, Justin Zick. BJ Zampa, uh, Oliver Wakeman. Okay. So uh, Oliver was a surprise. Oliver didn't come into the picture till much, much later, but I'm really happy that he did because he really added a lot to it. Sure. But yeah, so it's basically uh, hundreds of hours of, well, not hundreds, but probably a hundred hours of, uh, of research. I don't want to do too big of a fish story, sure. but, <laughs> but a lot of uh, ink, a lot of printing, just a lot of time went in and it's loosely based on my family heritage because you know, a lot of that stuff happened in the 1400s or 1500s. Sure. So it's like, I'm sure there's some things that were embellished, but anyway, that's why I say loosely based, but it was really cool to actually get to know all of that. And, uh, and then on to the music, <clears throat> Justin sent me the song, the black watch. That was, I think our first, uh, musical thing that we had to work on, which Dave went ahead and, uh, worked his own magic on. And then okay. he started writing and so on and so forth. 
you know, but uh, what ended up happening, unfortunately, was the, the wife got sick with cancer. Mm -hmm. And that all went uh, to the wayside on the sure. back burner, of course, for obvious reasons. Um, so, yeah, this is like over six years in the making. Okay. And, you know, I'm very, we're all very proud of it. I mean, I, I don't listen to myself that much, but, you know, when I put this in, the work that went behind it is, uh, well, it was a lot of work, to be honest, but a labor of love as well. Sure. You know, I'll bring up real quickly on the band members, you know, Dave and Mark Pierce, he, uh, musical director, guitar player, writer, engineer, producer, you know, the guy wore all the hats there is to wear on this. So right. this really would not have uh, got done if, if it wasn't for Dave. So I always give him that shout out for, you know, obvious reasons and uh, a great guy to boot. So, uh, and then Oliver Wakeman came into the, the picture as well. Later on, as I said, which uh, for some fans, they'll know Rick Wakeman from Yes. Sure. That's his son. Okay. Uh, but Oliver stands on his own as a piano and keyboard player. The guy's brilliant. And again, I was very stoked to have him involved. He really did you did know? Did great. you know his skill level when you went in, or did you just? I did a bit. I did a bit because David work works with Oliver. Okay. So David has played on a couple of his solo records, and they they work with one another. Okay. So I knew from watching videos when Dave was with him that the guy was really good. Sure. So when Dave said, "Hey, do you mind if Oliver takes a?" you know, a stab at some things. I'm like, you don't even need to ask. <laughs> right. Let him just see what he can do. Let's see. And it did. It really enhanced it a lot, in my opinion. Then, of course, Justin Zick, the kid, um, great guitar player, uh, the shredding solos, and the just, again, all around good guy. And then on drums, BJ Zampa. Uh, most of us know who BJ is. I mean, come on. Right. He, he did the David Wayne's Metal Church record with Jim. Right. Ben also house of lords and now docking for the last couple of years right plus played on peacemaker with me and monroe's thunder so bj's a good guy man and i there's not really any better drummers out there in my opinion you know right so I, that's kind of how that all came to, together and now here we are we're going right. to sit and uh well there we'll see what happens sure now, now, Ronnie, I, I have to imagine, especially since, and you didn't really touch on it, but I will, and you can elaborate on it. Okay. Your, your now late wife was in, was involved in this, was heavily involved. And that's, yes. that's one of the reasons that you had such determination to put it out. Yeah. That being said, I have to imagine this is just very difficult now to listen to it to you know to to talk about it you know i mean it's it's a lot of tough memories yeah i mean that's par for the course though in a situation like this you know and that's you know when these things happen in life you know you got two choices at the way i look at it mm -hmm. you can either lay on the couch in the fetal position and suck your thumb woe is me or you can put your best foot forward work through it the adversity sure and then um learn from it and and move on because i know for a fact like when somebody passes unless they were a complete douche <laughs> <laughs> right. they they want you to live their your life mm -hmm. and they want you to be as happy as possible because i know that's how I, when i go i want nothing but good for people sure well i do that one now that i'm alive but when i do go i want nothing but good for people you know so that's that's kind of what i think about too and and uh you know her pictures in there and all that and we did a, a very nice tribute to to joy sure you know so i feel good about it and you know there were some promises that i made that she asked me to make mm -hmm. before she left this uh, this earth and uh this is the last one i you okay. know she said can you please make sure that this is put out and dave knew that as well so him and i talked and uh it's out sure so, yeah now I, i'm gonna i'm gonna compare this in some way to one of my books that i wrote and um okay. and it's a totally different thing so I like you know I, way. oh thank you but when i when i know when i finished little victories my book about my divorce which obviously very different thing, although a loss is a loss, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it, it is when I finished it, 
that was it, it was until that moment that i felt any kind of closure at all i did not i felt still like a wide open wound right up until i finished the book and i had it in my hand and then i felt like you know almost like the proverbial book is closed and, and i was able to move on is that how you feel with the black watch like this kind of puts the the proper bookmark or the proper book end on you know a tough story that's a good question man um it closes the chapter so to speak mm -hmm. because you know just like any situation of loss we'll just put it that way sure you're gonna sorry my cat's trying to get involved in the interview or <laughs> he's moving my computer uh will stop please all right so um you close a chapter but you know there's always going to be memories and you know good memories the bad memories sure. you know you just got to learn to shut out you know because that was just something that was happening at the time but it didn't define her right or it doesn't define the person sorry about that That's or it doesn't is. it doesn't define the person right so you know there's always going to be that every once in a while something remembrance you know but uh i choose to to pick out the good ones it closes the chapter so to speak sure yeah and like i said i i certainly understand it man and you know i think and and correct me if i'm wrong but i think fans you know just fans don't understand that there's real real life and real thought and real meaning behind a lot of things i think fans are okay here's a cool record and now i'm on to the next one and they don't realize that a lot of times you know art comes from passion in almost every a good art does anyway yeah. and and i you know it, it's kind of ironic to me anyway and you tell me that people will hear something and you can even explain it just as we are right now and they'll listen to it once or twice and i'll be like okay but what's up with vicious rumors dude you know it's like it's it's almost like it's not important to you uh, well you know <laughs> uh attention spans are growing shorter and shorter by the second in this True. world <laughs> but you know i i don't even worry about any of that stuff chris because to be honest i i can't control it right you know and the fans that i do have that really like my stuff they're the true fans as every band has and they will sit and listen now for people that were involved uh from the start of monroe's thunder um they saw everything that happened through facebook and all that and when she got sick and this and that and many have stuck by it stuck by me stuck by the band um some not so much but again it's a fickle place this world right you know and again attention spans and all that but you know i just uh keep doing the best that i can and yeah vicious rumors that's the next thing sure and all that you know and beyond beyond the wrath but you know here i'm going to quote not quote something but there are times when i've seen even you know i remember a few months back when tim when uh ripper mm -hmm. made that comment people were giving him crap about being in so many bands right and he his comeback was perfect I, look i got a family i got kids mm -hmm. i gotta pay my bills right uh, that should be enough said right there I mean, no. it's not st not the day. We're not Metallica, right? You know, no disrespect to them. When I say that, I mean, we're not at the caliber of making all of our money strictly on our music, right? We all still have to do odds and ends and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, that's that's the way it's always going to be. And at this age, my age, I'll speak for myself. At this age, to be honest what i've got coming up with touring and all that is going to be just right for me because with metal church the first two years first two records we were almost on the road for two years straight sure and back in the day that was cool but yeah. uh you know now this day and age that has nothing to do with our age anything like that but look at the industry too true no you're right uh, yeah you no, know no, you've got to pick and choose right and now that we're in our mid-30s that uh, you know it's it's much different <laughs> thank you you saved me on that I know. <laughs> very nice well ronnie i'll tell you what man why don't we take a little break here and give people a taste of monroe's thunder uh you've got you this do. lyric video out there tell me a little bit about this song 
the songs are all again loosely based on the on the family history and i tried to be well as much as you can be positive in a war setting <laughs> right, yeah. you know I, it's just about awakening the fire within yourself even my first solo record remember the fire within well, yeah have nothing to do with this but it's that same kind of thing you know about uh the struggles of of them out being at, at war constantly for 30 years off and on off and on and just finding the uh, what's the correct word here finding the gumption uh -huh. inside or the power inside to continue on right which you can lead that into whatever you want like you just said about your book my uh -huh. situation with her it's about just trying to move on and do the best you can right on well let's check it out right now it is nope. brand new music from monroe's thunder right here on chris it's very presents. metal this it is metal it definitely is well, let's check it out it is chris aker presents That was Monroe's Thunder right here on Chris Aiken Presents. And we, of course, are talking with the vocalist of that song and of the new album, The Black Watch, Mr. Ronnie Monroe. And Ronnie, uh, let, let's dig into this record a little bit, man. And, and I know you mentioned it at the start about how this is about family heritage and, you know, the, the Middle Ages or the, the medieval ages or whatever we're calling that these days. Yeah. How much of that, like, I, I'll just be honest, for me, I literally learned that I have German in me like a year ago. Like I never, I'm not a heritage guy. I, I sort of knew that I had Irish because my grandparents took me to Ireland a couple of times when I was a kid, but I've just never been that guy, you know, that, that studied his heritage and knows, well, my families are the descendants of, you know, beer makers from wherever, you know, I don't know. I still don't know any of that. <laughs> so for you, did, did you, I mean, are, are you a heritage guy? Are you somebody that's always followed your heritage closely or was it just a fascinating topic to you or what? Well, actually we have a book and I, I got to find, I think my brother Rich has it. Okay. It was called the Monroe book that was written by a Lieutenant, uh, back in some of the, I think the 1700s. Okay. And we still have it. And wow. there's also a castle, remnants of a castle in Scotland the Mon of the Monroe Castle. It's called the Fallis Castle. So oh. that intrigued me. Now, if I never would have been told that, I would have been like you. Okay. You know, it's like, who gives a crap? You know, I'm right. here. I am who I am, whatever. Right. But no, that intrigued me, especially with that, that book. And uh, the family wanted to really hold on to it, and we have. And then the the castle. See, my older sister, who was our family historian, she went to Scotland. She visited the castle, and she met Hector Monroe, who is the clan leader. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, they actually—I uh, don't. The shirt was dirty, unfortunately, but my family crest. They actually gave permission. Dave was able to get that from them. Fa permission to use my family crest on a shirt which they generally don't do that you know mm -hmm. for whatever reason probably because it's like a metal record and bagpipes i'm not sure but sure. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah to answer that question it was kind of put in my face about it but then it was intriguing to me 
So sure. when it finally, it was years and years later when I finally decided to go ahead and investigate. Okay. It, and when I did, it was like I said, it was really cool. And it was one of those things like, like when you start reading, you know, you just, if you're interested, you're like, ah, oh, and you don't stop until right. you have to. Right, you right, know? right. So, now, yeah. Are, are you, and, uh, this really has no bearing on anything, but I'm just curious. Are you one of these guys that, that follows that whole that whole time period, like, do you watch Vikings and you know those, those types of shows? I mean, are, are, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, the, is that is that part of why when when you saw that you had this kind of a topic in your own heritage that maybe you had more of an appreciation to write about it? That's well put. Yeah, because also when I write, generally, uh, well, I've never done a concept record like I said before. Right. But before, you know, when you write, you just write whatever you're feeling and this and that. But with this, I really, uh, well, I pay attention to everything I write, but I paid extra attention to this. And especially knowing that some of it may not be true or it's just like, you know, something somebody saw. And, and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to be as careful as I could because I didn't want to, you know, I, did, I didn't want to misinterpret anything. Okay. Makes sense. Certainly, man. Well, dude, record just song wise, forgetting the topic for the topics for a minute. I, I, I always talk to everybody about what my favorite song is on the record. And usually I surprise people. I don't know if I am or not on this one, because I, I think this is a no brainer, at least for anybody that's hearing the record. My favorite track is brace for the night. It oh. is, it is such a cool, great riff. The riff you know, I know, I know that's not probably not you that wrote it, but man, that riff. No, no Dave, Dave. Yeah. Dave wrote that, the, wrote the music on that. Okay. And, well, thank you. Cause I, and my favorite part of that song, well, I like them all, but sure. Is the breakdown. Oh yeah. And then mm -hmm. the kind of, you know, and then yeah. that the screams, of course, that let me, gave me my opportunity to, you know, unleash some hell right you no know, with the screams and all that but uh but yeah thank you i i dig that too and you're not the only one a few people have said that yeah it, it, i mean it's 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 one of those familiar metal songs you know i i don't know what it's familiar to i don't want to say well it sounds like iron maiden or what because it, it, it really it doesn't necessarily but it's familiar it's like just got that yeah this is what metal is <laughs> oh cool well that's that's awesome to hear man you know and then the other tune that i wanted to talk about is the title track man very epic very big very long you know but but a cool but a cool track you know i mean and you know this man even taking yourself out of the picture for a minute sometimes when bands go six seven eight nine minutes it's tiresome you know it's like it's like okay get some discipline turn it into four <laughs> minutes and uh, dude and, and the funniest true true side story on this i actually said that once to john petrucci from dream theater that i i didn't think of he was all the people to say that too. yeah and i said it to him i said i don't think you're very disciplined as a songwriter and he just laughed and was like you know. <laughs> well what do you do with that <laughs> yeah well I, you know, I asked him what he thought if he thought that he was disciplined or not and he actually said yeah maybe not you know, but, but whatever, well, and, and who am I, you know, I'm just some yeah. dummy with a camera and he's making, you know, made millions of dollars doing nine minute songs. So, yeah, well, you know, with this one, and I agree on that most of the time, by the way, with all the songs and all that, but this one just ended up the way it was. And, right, you know, like I said, Justin sent that to me at the very beginning and then Dave got a hold of it and then formed it, molded it and turned it into uh, what it became. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, again, it was centered around, because that's, that's the thing that intrigued me the most is when I found out that my ancestors or some of my ancestors were in what they called the Black Watch, right. which guarded Mary, Queen of Scots. Right. So, of course, who's not going to get into that? And then, of course, you know, you, you're doing your research and William Wallace gets brought up right you know and this and that so there's brave heart coming into the picture and so it was all just pretty cool yeah it, it absolutely and is it's man. A, and it's a great song and i'm glad you like it and i'm glad sure. i didn't bore you to death <laughs> no not at all man <laughs> well dude uh, you know the, the 
you're a busy, busy guy. You have other bands that you're, that you are in. So where does that leave before we talk about those other bands, where does that leave the opportunities? If there are any to play some of these songs live, are, are you going to have the chance? Are you going to be able to play the yeah. Rose Thunder gigs or will it be part of other things or where does that sit? Well, um, okay. <clears throat> now that Monroe's Thunder is done for now, we're actually Dave and I have been talking about possibly doing a follow up. Let's okay. See. Um, of course, I am now in Vicious Rumors. Right. And for the last few months, first show I believe is going to be April Fool's Day. I believe we're doing Excellent. a a metal fest in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. I don't have any other details, but uh, I guess we're going to book some gigs, couple around that. Then after that. We're home for maybe three weeks, and we're going to be over in Europe four times so far. Uh, we go over for three weeks, come back. Then we go over in June for a week for festivals, come back, go over in July for festivals, come back, and go back in August for festivals and come back. So um, that'll be a busy time. But again, we'll go over for a week at a time and come back. So it's not like right. I have, you know, have to be gone for three months at a time and you know, the burping and the farting with the other <laughs> 12 guys in the bus kind of thing. But uh, so there's that. And also I started a, uh, a project called Beyond the Rap, okay. which is where I will do Monroe's Thunder songs as well as okay. search songs that I wrote, co-wrote. And also uh, some of the classics that apparently didn't get played on the last few tours. So okay. I'll hit those up because I, you know, Dave Wayne was, well, I was a huge fan. Sure. I was a huge fan of Mike too, but Dave was the first one I heard. Uh -huh. And I always loved those first two records. So I'll, I'll do stuff from that and, uh, and Monroe's Thunder and stuff from my solo records as well. But, you know, I'm kind of tr trying to surprise people with certain things and, and all that. And I'll actually, even before I go out, I'll be asking people, you know, what would you like to hear? You know, because I have so many hits to choose from. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've never had a hit. Come on. <laughs> well, you say that, but I think if you ask a lot of, uh, if you ask a lot of metal church fans, they will point out a light in the dark and say, you may not have had hits, but it certainly was a great album because that album just fucking rules, period. Uh, but thanks, man. I had a lot of fun doing that one too and singing that song uh, live and, and uh, Mirror of Lies. Yeah. Uh, and all of that was, uh, was awesome. And, and so the, those I'll be doing. the long one and the long song is good too. Is it the something of the sea? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. What the hip? temples <laughs> of the sea. Yes. Yeah. That's... Kurt wrote, Kurt wrote that it's lyrics and music. Sure. I mean, that Great was, as, as he used to call it, the Magnum hopeless <laughs> instead of Magnum opus. But, right. But anyway, um, yeah. And, and that is a cool, and that we did live. Yeah, it was, it was a blast doing that live. Actually, I forgot about that. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, that's a good now, one. I'm going back to stage now, remembering. Well, that was actually really cool because it's got like five different parts, right? And they're all great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. It's it's a great tune and great. And I, you know me, I loved the Metal Church era with Ronnie Monroe. That was okay. that was my era of. I, it's funny because you know, like it. Dude, I think everybody picks whatever they pick for, you know, I think most people they pick whenever they heard it first. Metal Church is one of those bands that I did not do that with because obviously I was, you know, I like everybody else. I heard Metal Church, Metal Church, Metal Church, you know, <laughs> you know, I heard that yeah, album yeah. first and um, and I was an MTV kid. So, of course, ton of bricks and all that stuff was was in my my mind, but I never really gravitated to the band other than seeing them with everybody else until you joined the band and then it was i don't know if it's that me and you became friends or what whatever it was but well, i think i did my first in real interview with with you with me yeah yeah, yeah we did that that was my first real good interview right <laughs> and and that was the one where we were passing the microphone back and forth upstairs at peabody's right. down under <laughs> peabody's that's right cleveland <laughs> Yep, that was I just remember that like it was there was the 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 band 
and me, and we were sitting around what I think was no bigger than like a, a, a student desk. And we were yeah. just turning the mic around to ask questions. It took me a hundred years to edit that interview. I remember that because, because every time we asked a question, then you heard the microphone sliding. So it was like, so Ronnie, you're in metal church now. <sighs> <laughs> yes, I am. You know, <laughs> you know, it was like, oh my God, I got maybe this. that was a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, man. Well, dude, I'm excited for you to be into vicious rumors. If me too. One, one, I'm excited about it because you're in it. And you know, again, we're we're boys, so that's good. But two, vicious rumors is one of my all-time favorite bands. I welcome I to the ball and the self-titled are fantastic I, I especially the you know don't wait for me and stuff like that so good i have to imagine for you as a metal fan that you cannot wait to get on stage and take your shot at the the car carl albert catalog as well as um add well, to it thanks man and i'm looking forward to it and i can second you on that because i remember uh headbangers ball mm -hmm. i'd never heard of the band and don't wait for me came on. Sure. And I was just like, oh, who the fuck is this? Pardon right. my friend. Wow. So I listened to the song, I'm like, okay. The next day I went out and got the record. And then uh -huh. I saw Welcome to the Ball. Right. Um, well, came la after that, of course. But uh -huh. I got that too. And I'm just like, you know, the whole thing. I'm waiting around because I haven't got paid yet. <laughs> you know, banging my head on the side of the pavement. <laughs> I mean, just come on you know, it's and great is <laughs> is just and, and just the way he sang his tone and i think we're we're pretty close and as far as tone goes and all that but there was sure. only one one carl albert one dave wayne one mike howe you know and all mm -hmm. that their gift so for me again stepping into another situation of a, original singer not being here any longer and all that um i i feel blessed i have another opportunity to mm -hmm. get back there in a big way and again like i said vr has always been in my top five favorite bands right no for, I'm, for I'm, a power, for a metal guy or power metal guy whatever it is how could it not be right so you yeah. know jeff, jeff and i become pretty pretty good friends so far we talk quite often and that's good and, and we knew each other a long time ago as well I almost, sure. joined the, I almost joined the band in 09. Okay. Wow. After Metal Church first broke up after we did Rocklahoma, but then it just didn't work out. Right. So how it happened was real quickly was, you know, Larry Howe, the drummer, mm -hmm. um, he uh, sent me a message. Okay. Saying, hey, man, what do you think? And it only took me like a day to even think about it. Of course, I had to think about it because I want to make sure with any decision I make, not only if it's, if it's right for me, is it right for them? Because that's something that you need to think about when you join a band that has a legacy. Uh -huh. You want to add to it. You don't want to tarnish it. Sure. So that's what I want to do with, with Vicious Rumors is add to the legacy. You know, we're talking, we're not writing as of yet, but we've went back and forth on a couple things. Okay. And, but right now, so everybody knows, uh, they do have a box set coming out right already out with those two records on it with a, a label out of germany and uh, my apologies i can't remember what the name of the label is but jeff handles all that right but uh that's the tours that we're going to be doing as well is on that box set and then right. once that is all done then that's when the focus will be on writing a new record with me on it and sure I'm very much looking forward to that because i'll tell you this jeff can still write the way that he used to write right and that doesn't happen very often. Oh yeah, the, even the, still, like, the metal that comes out of that guy is like, he's just one of those guys, man. Oh like, yeah, and and the last albums, Vicious Rumors. For if if you were a fan of like like me and you were in 1990 when it came out, and you listened, yeah. uh, what's the one? Electric Punishment, I think is is the. I don't know the names of the new ones, but I know they still kick ass, and it's you know. It, they all oh, they do, and and he's always picked. You know, he's always had good singers too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he's kind of known for that. You know, Brian Allen was in there for a while. Brian's a friend of mine. You know, he okay. called me at the beginning. What do you think about, you know, joining the band and, and stuff? I'm like, go for it, man. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I knew a couple of the other guys and all that. But like I said, he's always, always picked good singers. And then, uh, so I got, uh, you know, I've got some heavy shoes to fill. And, but 
one thing I got going for me is, is I used to listen to that stuff all the time and I love it. Sure. So yeah. now if it was something I didn't like and I had to like pain over learning the songs, right? it wouldn't be that fun for me. But this I'm stoked about. Sure. I think the other thing you probably have going for you is that you've stepped into big shoes before. So you know... You know, unlike somebody, you know, like Brian, as an example, he walked into a situation. He he just didn't know what he was going to walk into, if people are going to like him, if people are going to hate him. And the little True. things that you cannot explain to people, like there's always going to be people that are going to say you're not as good, no matter what you do. I mean, you, you could literally write the next master of puppets. And they're going to be like, yeah, but it's not one world church. It's, you know, that, that's just what you're going to get. That's it's very difficult. <laughs> I'm sh I'm sure you did. You dealt with that on the, on the biggest level with, with metal church with, you know, there's people that are always going to hold on to watch the children pray and, um, you know, metal church, the song and, you know, and they the, and they, of course they should, but it's not fair to you. And as the guy that comes in and replaces, you have to be able to take that with a grain of salt or you're going to fail before you start. <laughs> you are correct, sir. As uh, Ed McMahon once said. Sure. But anyway, you know, quick story on that. When I first joined and the first record came out, mm -hmm. you, we all know what blabbermouth.net is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I spent hours on that and actually a couple times didn't even sleep <laughs> because of being barraged right. with hate mail mm -hmm. and things like that. And not, but I got a lot of good press as well, but then sure. I got a lot of bad mm -hmm. and, and I get it because people are fickle. Mm -hmm. And again, the original guy not being there, I get it, but I'm maybe different because I always try to give the guy a chance. Sure. And a lot of people did, some didn't, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, but so. Well, and the human nature of it, and this is the thing that I, I don't think enough people realize or they just don't care. It's probably closer to the truth, but yeah, I, you can get a million great reviews. You get, I, dude, I, I get them all the time. People with the CMS, especially with classic metal show, they'll be like, oh, the show's so great. It's fun. It's honest. It's raw. It's how I feel, blah, blah, blah. Then I get the one, just the one guy. Like, <laughs> you're a, you're an asshole and you suck. And I, and I will obsess on that. I will absolutely be like you motherfucker. What did I, and then, then it's in my own head. Well, did I not do something? Well, did I sound stupid? Did I, you know, you know, that you, you go through 400 iterations in your own head instead of appreciating the 9,000 good words. You're entertaining 9,000 people, but 9,001 <laughs> doesn't like you. And you're worried about him more than you are the 9,000. Let me put it this way. If you and I were to be in the same room reading our own reviews, we'd need probably a dump truck full of tissue. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> It'd be a commiseration party. It but would, man. It's I'm crazy. too. Until I learned, well, I'm still that way, but I did learn over the years, you got to grow thick skin. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I go out and do the vicious rumors thing, they're still going to be the ones, like you just said, they're going to be sure. like, ah, he's not Carl Albert. Well, no, I'm not. Yeah. But I, one thing I do with anything that I'm in, like with Metal Church, I tried to emulate the best I could both of them when mm -hmm. I sang songs. And I think I got pretty good reviews about that. Because I, it's it's about the music, and I also put myself in it, but sure. I paid tribute to the way, the original songs. Mm -hmm. Because as a fan, I know when you go, you want to hear it like that, right? As close as you can to not being the real singer, right? Sure, so, but but you know, and, and again, I don't want to go into a whole metal church hour here, but. The one thing that I appreciated about your time in metal church, and I saw you quite a few times, you know, doing the metal church thing, you did exactly that. You, you know, you, you, it seemed like you studied even the nuances and stuff for, you know, the going from the lows to the highs and the screams and everything that comes with that gig with, the, with the old songs. But when you released albums, you didn't try to mimic what you thought they would have done you did your own thing as a member of metal church and i think yeah. that stood out and to me that stood out on both way to the world and light in the dark and and the other one what's the other one generation well, there, there's two more now this present wasteland that's right yeah very positive name 
and uh, <laughs> Generation Nothing, another positive name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, thank you, man, because um, I did. I and and Kurt was to uh, he helped with that as well because at first he was thinking that's what he would need me to do. Right on. But then after a few songs and all that, he was just kind of like, "Let's just do what you're doing." Right. No. You know, let's not worry about that. But uh, you know, when we're live, do you know try to emulate the best you can? And so that's what I did. But I really didn't try because that's the same kind of voice, kind of. You know, not right. Mike Howes or Dave, but we're all different voices. But you know what I mean. All the around the same style is what I'm trying to say. Right on, definitely. So, dude, obviously, man, you have lots of vicious rumors uh, in 2023. Is that, do you yeah. think that for the most part, that is going to be what you're doing in 2023? Or it do is. You plan it, to? Well, Beyond the Wrath as well. Okay. Another thing. And there's one thing that I can't, well, I can bring it up, but I can't say the name. Sure, sure. Uh, but there's a, a band in Germany that I'm working with. Okay. And I actually fly out to Stuttgart on the 1st of December and I'll be there for half the month recording an album with them. And so once that's all done, you know, it's going to come out the way it's supposed to, but uh, okay. great band. Um, the music is a mixture of basically what you said that you hear in my in Monroe Thunder and everything else. Okay. There's elements of prog metal, even I've always been a huge fan of the cult. And, and so there's remnants of that kind of stuff. It's like all the kind of musics I I like, okay. styles of music I like. That is wrapped into one. And again, right. I got all, a bunch of great guys and and stuff like that. So I'll be able to talk about that and give the name, you know, in a few weeks. Cool. But so that's going on, and I'll probably end up doing some festivals with them as well. Very good, man. Wow, sounds like a Trying sounds like a lot. Busy. <laughs> well it is it, it is but it's it's about time because i was out of the industry for obvious reasons for sure. a few years because i had to take care of her and you know that music was the last thing i was worried about at that point you know because right. that's doing something on the whole different spectrum right 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 definitely well i'm glad you're back in the music world dude and i'm glad that you're back with this great release it's called monroe's thunder it is um available now it's the black watch is the name of the album the band is monroe's thunder and uh ronnie where should i tell people to go online to keep up with you and tour dates and bands and all that other stuff <laughs> all right well you know with uh the record for, and i need to i didn't mention this yet rfl records okay John and rfl records they're the one that put this out. They were with us from the very start. And uh, that's why I continued on with John. Done a great job so far. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you can go to rflrecords.com. You can go to Facebook. Uh, I have a new Facebook, so everybody knows I got hacked after. It's my first time ever being hacked. Right. I mean, I went through all through MySpace crap into Facebook, and they wouldn't give it back. So I had to start a new one. So I'm still there as Ronnie Monroe. But Monroe's Thunder Facebook is up. Ronnie Monroe okay. Music is still up. So you can find links on those to go buy. Of course, Amazon's got it, iTunes. But you can order it directly through RFL. And if you get a pre-order, which I think you'll have, I don't know if he's got any of that left, but there are shirts and there's some posters too. So check it Very out. Good. And as a teaser, maybe me and you are doing something in the future here soon. So. <laughs> There we go. There's yeah, our I, teaser. I we're going, we are going to do something. So, <laughs> so there you go, fans. Fans of me, fans of Ronnie. We're gonna we're gonna collaborate on something. It's here, a lot of fans, great. like twelve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you twelve people are in for a treat. <laughs> we're gonna crush you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, let's. Uh, why don't we? Uh, why don't we wrap this up with uh, your last a video from your last band, um, Between Worlds. Okay. Um, um and um i believe the title track is out there so why don't we play that let's do it all right let's check it out this is ronnie monroe it's between worlds and again monroe's thunder the black watch it is out now and ronnie thanks so much for joining me here on chris aiken presents chris thank you so much my brother you be good and everybody out there stay metal and stay safe